there are a number of shortcuts that you can use when you're moving the current time indicator in the timeline panel to save time. Obviously, I can drag the current time indicator like this, but let's take a look at a few of those shortcuts. The first is the go to time shortcut. And remember, when I changed my keyboard shortcuts, I modified that to be Alt G, Option G on the Mac. So I'm going to go to one second by typing in 100. So that's one way to zero in on a specific time on the timeline. You can also press the page up or page down key. That's going to move you one frame. If I hold down the shift key and press page up, I'll go back 10 frames. Shift page down takes me forward 10 frames. If I hold control shift and use the left and right arrows, that's another way of doing the same thing. If I remove the shift key and just press control left arrow or right arrow, I can move one frame. So you have a choice there, page up or page down or control left arrow or right arrow. And adding the shift key will move you in increments of 10 frames. To go to the in point of the layer, I can press the I key. To go to the out point of the layer, I can press the O key. So I and O. If I trim that layer and I press I, that'll take me to the first trimmed frame. If I press O, that'll take me to the last trim frame. Now, what about if I duplicate this layer, Control D, and just drag that a little bit further down the timeline? What if I have layer one selected and I want to select the in point of layer two? There's a couple of ways I could do that. I could press two on the keypad. Then I could press the I key or the O key to select the out point. Then select one on the keypad, I, O. I could also press control down arrow to select the layer below or the layer above rather than using the keypad. But there is a faster way to navigate the in and out points of multiple layers. If I hold down control alt shift, that's command option shift on Mac and press the left or right arrow, then no matter what layer I have selected, I can navigate to the edit points of all of the layers combined. If I select the top layer, Try the same thing. Doesn't matter which layer I have selected. So this is a faster way to navigate to the edit points of layers in your timeline panel. Okay, so now let's talk about trimming layers. If I double click this layer, I can open up the layer panel. And if I go to one second, I can choose to set the in point, but watch what happens to the layer in the timeline panel. If I click set in point, It'll trim the first second off that layer and it shifts the layer to start at zero seconds. This time go to two seconds and then click the set out point and that'll trim the end of the layer. So that's one way that you can trim layers, but just remember that with this method, the new trimmed in point will be shifted back on the timeline to match the original in point of the layer. Let me just undo that. Now, a way to do the same thing directly in the timeline panel is to press Alt G, 100, hold down the Alt key or Option key on Mac, press the left square bracket to trim the in point, Alt G, 200, right square bracket to trim the out point, and then hold down the Alt key or Option key and press the Home key. And that'll shift the layer back to zero seconds. If I press Option End, that's gonna shift the out point to the end of the comp. So that's a way to do exactly the same thing that the layer window does when trimming. But of course, you don't have to press Alt Home in this case to have the layer shift back to zero seconds. Now, another way to trim is to trim the element before it even reaches the timeline. And you do that using the footage panel. So over here in the project panel, if I double click, that'll open up the footage panel for this footage. And this is more of a nonlinear editing workflow where I can set the in point and set the out point then I can use these buttons here, the ripple insert edit or the overlay edit to add that to the timeline. I'm just gonna use overlay edit and that drops that in the timeline. Personally, I rarely use the footage panel, but it's nice to know that that's there. Now, of course, trimming a layer reveals this gray bar on the left and here on the right because I've trimmed both the start and the end. And this is the slip bar. 
If I move my time indicator just to the first frame here and I drag my slip bar, I can slip the first frame, the first viewable frame, but not change the edit point. Same at the end. Just slip and change the last viewable frame, but not change the end point of the layer. Very handy nonlinear editing function there. You can also use the pan behind or anchor point tool to do the same thing without dragging on the slip bar. The shortcut for that is Y. So if I click now on the layer itself, I can slip that. And this of course could be handy if you're zoomed right into your layers and you can't actually see the slip bar on the start or the end of the layer. Now if you happen to have keyframes on that layer, let's just set a keyframe for scale for example. Now I've still got the pan behind tool selected and the keyframe is selected. So if I click and drag, that's going to move the keyframe as well. If I just press V to go back to my selection tool and drag on the slip bar here, once again with the keyframe selected, that's going to slip the layer and move the keyframe as well, which is very handy to know. Let's just set a keyframe for position and I'm going to select the scale keyframe and do the same thing. And you can see it only moves the keyframes that are selected.